Today is Monday, November the 13th. We are reading John chapter 21 together. It's the end of our study through the Gospel of John together. I hope it's been encouraging to you just to walk through the life of Jesus, be reminded of his love, his compassion, and his grace that he has extended to you through his sacrifice on the cross. Uh, in John chapter 1, we, one of the things we talk about a lot is we highlight things, right? And we ask each other what we saw in the passage, we learn about Jesus, we learn about people, next steps we could take. And today what I just wanted to talk about for a minute is in verse 9. It says, when they landed, this is uh, Peter and some of the other apostles, they saw a fire burning coals there. Sorry, I'm sorry. They saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Uh, something that Adam's talked about before, and it's become one of my favorite uh, Bible words, is a Greek word called anthrakia. It's that word that it says burning coals, or a charcoal fire. It's only used twice in the entire Bible, and it's used by John both times. John uses it in chapter 21 of uh, his gospel account. He also uses it in chapter 18 of, when he's talking about Peter's denials. Both times was a charcoal fire. In chapter 18, if you remember, Peter is confronted by different people saying, Hey, aren't you a follower of Jesus? Is that Jesus trial? He said, I, I don't know Jesus. I don't know Jesus. He denied him three times. And Peter gets off this boat in chapter 21. He jumps up and he runs to the shore and he sees this charcoal fire. And the last time he saw Jesus around a charcoal fire, he was denying Jesus. And I'm going to read into the text a little bit, but I know from my own personal experiences in life that if I were Peter, I would have seen the charcoal fire, seen Jesus, and known, oh, last time I saw you there, I said I didn't know you. And, and these flooding of memories of denying Jesus would have risen there. And I think it's really interesting what Jesus does, because again, I'm not trying to infer something that's not even in the te text, it's here. Because as soon as this happens, if you read a little further, it says, they had finished eating, this is verse 15, and Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. And Jesus begins to talk about this three times to Peter. Do you remember how many times Peter denied Jesus in chapter 18? Three times. And now three times in this passage around a charcoal fire, Peter gets to remind, gets to say aloud, I love you. He gets a chance to no longer be dishonoring Jesus by saying, I don't know you, but saying, I love you, I serve you, I wanna be faithful to you. And Jesus restores him in this moment. I think it's awesome. What we learn about Peter, and like what I love about this is it go a little further. It says, truly I tell you, this is in verse 18. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you're older, you'll stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would, be glor would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Maybe you're wondering, what does that mean? Well, if, if you do some church history study, you'll find out that Church history says that Peter died by crucifixion. Under the reign of Emperor Nero, and this was in the 60s AD, there was this fire in Rome and Nero blamed the Christians and Jewish people living there for this fire. Most historians, not Christian historians, mind you, but Greek historians and even Roman historians like Suetonius and Josephus and all these other people actually say he blamed Christians, but most citizens thought it was him. Because the places that were burned were places that Nero really wanted to build a new temple and a new uh, uh, palace to himself at. So he used this opportunity to blame them. And because Peter was in prison during this time and he was a leader of this movement of Jesus followers, Nero crucified Peter. And it says that Peter, uh, and church tradition says that Peter was crucified upside down because of this story here. He didn't think he was worthy to be crucified the same way his Lord was because he had denied him. What takes somebody from being a denier of Jesus to being a follower committed solely to dying for Jesus? And it's this life-changing experience we have. What I highlight through this is just this story, right? The whole thing. And the reason is, is something I learned about Jesus and people. So it's all going to be kind of meshed up today a little bit for you. We are all like Peter. If you think about your life for a little bit, you are like Peter, I'm like Peter. 
all of us are. We have times of great moments, like if you read through the Gospel of John, where we were following Jesus, we're doing great things for Him, we're on board with Him, and there's also moments that are messy and confusing, and moments where we didn't do our best, like denying Jesus. And we've all had those moments where we could have done better. We could have stood for the Lord. We could have said the right, the, the right thing. Right? We could have taken a stand for Jesus, and, and we failed miserably. But I love about this passage is that it reminds us that Jesus doesn't discard us. He wants us. We need to acknowledge that we failed, but then we need to let our past be buried, and we can raise up into a new life in Jesus. We can let our sins of choosing to say no to Jesus be washed away in the water of baptism and rise up into a new life. When we are believers in God, our past doesn't disqualify us from our future. Peter's past was messy. Peter's past was full of denial, was full of brokenness, was full of still trying to figure out this Jesus thing. It was a mess. And so is your past, and so is my past but it didn't disqualify him for the future God had in store for him. He goes on to lead thousands and thousands and thousands of people to Jesus. You may not be leading thousands of people to Jesus, but who knows the one person whose life you might change because you realize that your past doesn't disqualify you anymore. It happened and God can forgive it and it's time to raise up. It's time to be like Peter saying, Lord, I love you. I'm gonna take care of your sheep. I'm gonna take care of your people and live faithfully for God. I hope that's an encouragement to you today. And maybe you learned a new word today, anthrakia in the, in the Bible. It's a Greek word that means charcoal fire. God wants to restore you too. What about you? What did you highlight? What are things you learned about Jesus and people in this passage and next steps you can take? I hope that, I know it's a little different than we normally do it, but I hope that was an encouragement to you and just to leave your past behind, take a next step in following Jesus and loving him and people well today. I'm going to read this last passage for us today. If you've already read this, you are sent. Let's read together. John chapter 21. Afterward, and Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, have you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing their net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals. There was a fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat, dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands as someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. 
Peter turned and saw the other disciples whom uh, saw the other that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, "Lord, who is going to betray you?" When Peter saw him, he asked, "Lord, what about him?" And Jesus answered, "If I want him to return, sorry, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is it to you? You must follow me." Because of this, the rumor had spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them was written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Let's pray. Lord in heaven, we want to honor you. We thank you for redeeming us, restoring us, giving us a second chance. Your word says if anyone's in Christ, they're a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. That's a second chance. Just like Peter was given, we want to walk in our new chances. Father, I don't know where people are today. As they're listening to this, as they're reading this, but I pray that you keep the enemy at bay from them. And that they remember whose they are and that they remember that they have a second chance and that their past doesn't disqualify them for the future, that God has a plan for them and he, you long to use them. So Lord, fill them with your spirit today. Send them out to do mighty works for your kingdom. Amen. Church, until we see each other tomorrow, you are sent. Have a great day.